Hey guys, Joanna coming back in with another battle replay here for Rome 2. We are on the settlement of Hecatomopolis. I think that's how you say it, Hecatomopolis, maybe? Not entirely sure, uh, but we do have a 2v2 siege here. It is a pretty short one, so hopefully you guys have time to sit down and watch this uh, around about 22 minute video or so. Uh, also, guys, just make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button. Any new people who are coming in to watch my videos, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would deeply appreciate that. But all right, let's get into this. Welcome back to the Lange of Sieges. We will start off here with Kush, who's being commanded by Sia. Sia is bringing with him five units of Kushite Slave Infantry, seven Chotel Warriors. He's also got way back over here. He's got two more units of the Armored Chotel Warriors and only one unit of Kushite Archers. Royal Kushite Archers, that's his general. Very confusing. Moving on over here to Pontus, though, he's got a little bit better of an army comp. We'll have Pontus being commanded by Carlos. Carlos is bringing with him seven units of Pontic Swordsmen, six Hillmen, four units of Eastern Onager, uh, Eastern Onagers, <laughs> four units of Eastern Archers, one unit of the Eastern Onager. He does have two units of the Ptolemaic Cav, one of those being his general. Moving in here onto the defender side, we do start off with Egypt, who's being commanded by Brennan. Brennan is bringing with him four units of Galatian Swordsmen, four Thorax Swordsmen, two Thoreo Spears, one unit of the Thorax Pikemen, one Egyptian Infantry, one Nubian Spearman, four units of Nubian Bowmen, a Ptolemaic Cav Gen, and he also does have a unit of Citizen Cavalry back here by the gate. His ally here is Arverni, who's being commanded by Terror Clown. <laughs> Terror Clown is bringing with him five units of Celtic Warriors, five Chosen Swordsmen, Three units of Levy Freeman, four Garlic Hunters. His general is a unit of the Osworn, and he's bringing some cavalry as well. He's got two units of the Heavy Horse. But like I said, 19 minutes, six seconds, guys. Hope you guys enjoy this battle replay. If you do, please make sure to hit that like button. Feel free to drop a comment down below. Like I said, continue to hit that subscribe button. And also, guys, feel free to share the content around. I would deeply appreciate that. Well, I'm seeing a lot of yellow lines over here. Oh, what is... Oh... Okay, so we got a lot of our Verney infantry making their way out of the settlement. Looks like this whole front... Yeah, pretty much everybody. Wow. They're going to come out here and post up in front of the wall. Very interesting. And they, yep, there goes this two heavy horse. They're moving around as well. Okay, well, this is a new this is a new thing. I don't recall seeing Arverni ever do this before, but he has brought out his three units of his Levy Freeman, all five units of his Celtic Warriors. He's kept his bows inside. He's actually getting both two units up on the walls there. He does also have his ballista, who's not currently firing. Oh, there he goes. Now he's going to start firing. He's going to get right through that gap there, starting to get into some of the Kushite slave infantry. Doesn't really look like he hit any of them. But yeah, he's just getting some shots in onto the Kushite Slave Infantry as they're moving up the towers. Actually, he's got one unit moving up by themselves. Oh, wait. These are Chotel Warriors. Oh, man. Ooh, I don't know if you should be moving these guys up first. I would have much... Probably been a better idea to move up the Kushite Slave Infantry first. Oh, we got more archers. Look at that. Kushite Archers just showing up out of nowhere. Unless maybe they were on one of the towers and I didn't see them. But I don't think that's... I don't think that's accurate. Let's see what's going on over on this side. Pontus is moving up his towers. Looks like they've already taken out one of the Egyptian wall artilleries, as we did see that Egypt actually on this side has three. Three wall artillery, man. Pretty sure that's uh, not part of the rules, but I don't know what the rules were in this battle. Eastern Archers taking a little bit of losses here so far. Only two out of that unit here. We got the Easter. Oh got the Egyptian cavalry, citizen cavalry going to try and make a beeline over here, but I think this total, yeah, I think the Ponte cavalry is going to catch him up. Oh, yeah, they caught him. They caught him. Citizen cavalry still just going to try and pull right through there, though, but now they're going to start getting shot, and it sounds like Egypt is using explosive, <laughs> explosive shot. But all right, he's going to get in. Citizen Cavalry is going to make it into the archers, but I don't think they're going to be around. For oh, wait, no, he's shooting the general. Not that it matters, though. You're not going to kill anybody with explosive shot. But 
Doing a pretty good number down to 96, down to 90 now. Oh my god, actually, I think... Yeah, so one of the Eastern Archer units might be lost, but look at this here. Yeah, the rest of that sense of cavalry is going to die. Down to 22 men. So good, good try there. Definitely a good try with his cavalry. Let's see, 49 kills. Not the worst. Not the worst, but back over on the other side here. Look at this. Arverni having a much better time getting into the Kushite Archers and the Royal Kushite Archer General. Oh, man. Nasty. It's second unit now coming in for his charge. But very well done there by Arverni. He's actually not just blobbing up his cavalry and charging them both in at the same time. He got a good charge with the first one, pulled them out, got a second charge, and now he's coming in with yet another charge. So these two units of art, yeah, look at that. Kush General on his way out, down to 30 men left. The other unit here down to 26, but that's going to be the end of the general. Is the general actually dead? No. He's got his other two units of archers over here, though. I did not see them. They were hidden. They had to have been hidden behind those towers. I just did not see them there, but yep. Kush's general is dead, which is going to be a major problem for them. Look at that. Kushite slave infantry just breaking pretty much immediately. 119 men in that unit, 126 in this unit. Starting to rout, not looking good. Artillery fire still coming down. Getting into these armored Shoto warriors here now. 17 men lost out of that unit. Archers still trying to get some good volleys up. They are volleying into the Levy Freeman, which isn't a bad idea. Try and break them down as best as possible. But up over here, look at that. Even this Shoto warrior unit morale is not looking good. And they are just getting blasted by these Gallic hunters. Blasted. Really, really, really great volleys. Pretty much every single one of them hitting their mark exactly where they need to. Our Verney horse is still very good. 78 in that unit, 77 in that unit, 149 and 73. Great job so far with our Verney's cavalry. Let's get back over here onto Pontus and Egypt's side. Ptolemy Cav, I'm sorry, Ptolemy Cav. Pontic Royal Cav pulling back out. Looks like they were just kind of sitting over here. Pontus doing a pretty good job, though. He's starting to bring his archers up onto the wall. Might be a little early for the archers to get up here. Glacian Swordsman right there. Might have been a better... Actually, it might have been a better idea. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Oh, this wall is going to be... Oh, wait. No, they're already out of ammo. Yep, 155 kills. Okay, so it doesn't really matter unless, unless he gets another unit of archers up there then Pontus can kind of do whatever he wants to do over here. But yeah, look at that. His archers are very close to getting into melee. They are now in melee combat. He brought them up the wrong tower. Thorax Swordsman here guarding the base of this staircase right next to him, another unit of Thorax Swordsman. See how this front is going. We have the gate almost engulfed in flame. It's very, 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 very smoky over here right now. So these guys up on the top would more than likely be not breathing very well. Just going to say, the smoke doesn't just automatically go this way. This whole gatehouse would be being lit on fire, aside of the fact, obviously, the rest of it is stone. But okay, so Kush is actually doing pretty good now. He got rid of that front bit of the sally out. We see a lot of green out here. I mean, there's some, there's some yellow out here, but a decent amount of green out here. So let's check and see what Arverni lost. Don't see any more of his Levy Freeman. And I see one, two, three, four units of his Celtic, Celtic warriors left. It didn't actually really take that very, take a whole lot of damage. But look at this. Here we go again. Heavy horse getting their work done. Crushing into some Crushite slave infantry. And look at that. Second unit's going to come around the back of the towers over here. As you say. Got some Shotel Warriors. Looks like they're going to try and chase down this unit. Another unit of armored Shotel Warriors have made their way back over here. So, yeah, guys, again, reminder, archers on siege. When you're attacking on a siege, archers are your lifeline. You need them in order to survive. Unless you're just really that beast that you don't need archers. But I haven't really come across that many people that don't need archers or some sort of ranged in order to be successful in a siege attack. Now let's see, could Arvern, he could, he might be able to do one of these. He might be able to sleep, slink back around there. These armored Shoto warriors are going to be exhausted because the cavalry is just going to keep going. 
I don't blame you. Yeah, just keep moving, Cavalry. You don't have to stop. Push that slave infantry over here. Actually, look at this. Are they actually firing through? Or are they firing up? Oh, they're firing up onto those Celtic warriors who are, look at them, tossing their javelins straight down. Look at the archer fire coming up here now, but still a lot of them are hitting the ground, I think. Yeah, a lot of them are hitting the walls. I can see the arrows right there on the ground. See those black little speck lines. But all right, let's get back over here, see how Pontus and Egypt is doing. Pontus is, oh no, unit of is, oh, that's just Hillman, never mind. Hillman right there behind them, okay. So where are his Pontic swordsmen? Where's his, that long line of Pontic swordsmen? I see one, two, three units of Pontic swordsmen. Oh, four or five. Okay, he's got five of them left. So he has thrown some of his Pontic swordsmen up into the settlement. Is this unit out of ammo? No. They could be firing right down here. Pontus, fire at that. Right on the flank. Just lob shots right into that thorax sword of the unit who's actually getting rid of a unit of Hillman, but that's not a big deal. It's just Hillman. Galician sword surrounded. Pontic swordsman on one side, Hillman on the other. So the Pontic Royal Cavalry General out there as well. But look at this. Kush sending a unit all the way down over here. Or did he just realize that they were running all the way over here? No, because I think that's the unit that was chasing after the cavalry. Look, look at Arverni. He, he lost no sleep on that unit of armored Chotel warriors chasing him. No sleep whatsoever. But all right, looks like Kush is going to only land two towers on the wall here. Could easily come back and grab some more. Probably another two or three towers pressed up over here would give him a much better advantage on trying to attack this settlement. I mean, he's just trying right here on two spots of the wall. Slave infantry, some Shota warriors making their way up. Another unit of slave infantry there. At least it's the good slave infantry. I'll say that. It's Kushite slave infantry. It's not the regular slave infantry whose armor is completely garbage. At least... Oh, wait. No, that is regular slave. Oh, so you can see it. Okay, good. So he's got slave infantry. Look at that. 22, 35, 24, 5. We got Kushite slave infantry. Look at that. 2035. Get out of the way. 2035, 5240. So look at the difference between regular slave infantry and Kushite slave infantry. Big difference. Big, big, big difference. But speaking of difference making again, heavy horse coming in again and just slamming these Kushite archers. And there they go. Kush's archers are now completely gone. He lost his general so early on in this battle. Arverni doing a great job. 153, this unit here with 219 kills. Wow. Very, very impressive. Very well done. And he actually hasn't lost that many. 66 in that unit, 54 in that unit. So he still has a decent, decent amount of cavalry left. But, ooh, we got some armored Chotel warriors up on the wall, but they are not looking good. Morale is trash right now. There, yeah, look at that. Steady friends routing. They are not going to look good when they get up there, but they might actually be able to do some damage. They could do some damage against these Celtic warriors. I mean, this unit's only the 56 left in it. This unit here with only 89, but the Arverni Gallic Hunters here ready for the task. They were just volleying. Let's see, 149, 30. This unit here with 147. But looks like they still have some more ammo. Just volleying up into these armored Chotel warriors there up on the wall. Down 12 men so far. Got uh, decapitation right there. Good job. Verdi cavalry still moving around. What are they doing now? Oh, they're just going to come in, rear charge in onto the back of these Shotel Warriors. Oh, my God. Crushing them. Where's the other unit? Come on, go. Get in here. 
Yep, here they come. Here they come. And these guys are just going to chase, which is going to leave their flank wide open. It's fine, they got a little javelin volley off. Actually, wow, they just wrecked that unit. Heavy Horse is pretty much gone, but keep going with the second unit. Keep going. They're all running away. They're, none of them are braced. Big hammer again. Get him right back out. Get him out of there. Uh, maybe he's just going to leave him in there. Maybe they, they might be locked in. Yeah, they might actually be locked into melee. It's going to take him a little bit to pull them out, but I don't think he's even going to bother. 260 kills. Not too bad. Not too bad at all, bud. Good job there. All right, let's see what's going on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is going on over here? Egypt uh, looks like Egypt has taken <laughs> the initiative here to charge out of the settlement. So we had Arverni go out right at the beginning of the battle. And now we have Egypt sending some units out here as well. We have some of the Nubian bowmen getting some volleys up and over down onto the Pontic Royal Cavalry. General's actually made his way over here as well. 75 men left in his unit. 109 kills for him. The other unit of Royal Cavalry with 123. Got some of the Nubian spearmen out here. Looks like they just activated their adva rapid advance. Which, bad timing. Bad timing on the rapid advance. Probably should have used that as soon as he was charging out. But, oh, I just saw a big javelin volley. Yeah, Hillman coming over here. They're going to try and save their general. Nubian spearmen here are in melee combat, but the artillery is still firing. I don't know. I, I don't know what the rules were for this battle, but Egypt's got had three pieces of artillery. Three. That's pretty insane. And this one's still got ammo because yeah, he's still firing. I mean, he's using. He just. He was. I saw a shot. I saw a shot. I saw a shot. It says firing. I don't know why it's not firing, but it says it's firing. Look at that. Pontic Royal Cavalry being routed off of the battlefield. 163 kills. They are just being littered by arrows. Littered. Nubian Bowman here, 136. What's the rest of his archers? There's a unit 173. 97 for this unit, so they should still have ammo. Yeah, they still have ammo. They're actually firing down on a broken or a routed unit of Pontus Swordsman. So Pontus did not do very well at all in this engagement. Back over on this side, let's see. Kush with his final remaining forces. Three minutes, 17 seconds left. They are starting to take the gate, though. Arverni's letting them take the gate. I don't know if you should do that. I mean, there's no arrow towers to worry about, so it's not that big of a deal, but allowing him to take the gate would let Kush send units through here, which could be huge, but it does not look like they're, yeah, they're not going to do that. Maybe they are? Nope, that's a unit of broken Chotel warriors. Gallic hunters are going to be guarding the gate there. Chotel warriors coming down back behind the armored Chotel warriors that are doing a pretty good job over here. Okay, so this is promising. This is promising. I just want to say I'm pretty sure. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. I only see one circle. I'm going to guess that right there is the town center. I should have said that way back at the beginning, so I do apologize, guys, if I didn't. But here we go. Kush getting a little bit of an offense. Okay. Armored and regular Shoto warriors should be able to cut through these guys. Not a problem at all. Both of these units should just die very, very, very quickly. Let's get back over here. The Chosen Swords have moved up. Two units of Chosen Swords have moved up, cutting off some of the Shoto Warriors there and one unit of Armored Shoto Warriors, but they are not looking good at all. Really not looking good. Celtic Warriors now have climbed up on the wall. They're going to come in and cascade into this Shoto Warrior unit. Another unit of Shoto Warriors coming up. And I think there's, what is else is there? Kushite Slave Infantry there as well. Let's get back over on this side though. Yeah, Pontus is gone. Wow. Wow. Great job, Egypt. Really, really great job. Here comes his general piling out of the city. Maybe he's a little jealous. He wants to get some kills. That's possible. That is possible. We have another unit of Pontic Swordsmen up on the wall there. What are they fighting? What are they fighting? Thorax Swordsman. Oh, I didn't see the banner. It's in there. 
So you have the, the, the defenders easily. I mean, Egypt could easily just send a unit up here, come along the wall, get into the back of those Pontic Swordsmen, and that would be about the end of that. One final Pontic Swordsman outside of the settlement, one up on the wall there, but their morale has dropped. 52 seconds left in the battle replay, and obviously you guys can see that this is going to be a defensive victory. Defensive victory, great job. Really aggressive. I mean, it wasn't like over aggressive. He didn't... Arverni didn't charge all the way down, but he definitely put a path in the way which made Kush have to come to him first. And that allowed the Arverni Cavalry to come around into the side and just get a ton of kills. Absolutely great job with Arverni and his cavalry. Even on this side, you know, that initial that initial cavalry really didn't do a lot. I think he got like 50 kills, 52 kills, something like that. Um, but once he realized that he had Pontus pretty much backed into a corner, he started throwing units straight out the front gate there and was able to do a very good job getting rid of the... Pontus General and the other unit of cavalry and the rest of the army. So great job there by the defenders. Let's get into the army comps here at the end. We will deal with Arverni first, who is being commanded, like I said, by Terror Clown. He's actually the guy that sent the replay in. So, dude, thank you very much for sending the replay. Uh, his heavy horse, 264, 164. Archers, 156, 113, 186. Great job. Chosen Swordsman, really not even a whole lot of kills. Top there with 80. And then his Celtic Warriors, 117, 157, 90. It's top unit of Levy Freeman there with 53. So his army, his his kills all pretty much came from his cavalry and his archers. That was the majority of his kills. Couple, Like I said, a couple units of his Celtic warriors, over 100 kills. Getting into Egypt here, his general, four kills. The other unit says cavalry, 49. That was close. His archers, though, great job. 223, 181, 160, 187. Really great job with his archers. Galician swordsman, 179, 161, 125. Thorax swordsman, 268. And that's going to be the end of that. I thought he had more kills. Um, getting into Kush here. His general, yeah, these two units got smashed. Absolutely smashed by the Arverni Cavalry. Kushite Archers, 109-68. Armored Choteau Warriors, 248. Mm, regular Choteau Warriors. Actually, he's got a Kushite Slave Infantry there with 98. Good job there. Choteau Warriors, 113, 187, 199, 106. And that's going to wrap up that wrap that up. But all right, guys, like I said, back at the beginning, it was only a 19 minute battle. So hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys were able to stay around for this 20 to 22 minute video. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great rest of your day. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit that like button. Feel free to drop a comment down below. Share the content around. Subscribe to the channel, guys. Getting so close to 3,300 subscribers already. And it feels like it, feels like it wasn't that long ago where I said 3,200 subscribers. So... You know, it, it, it is, you guys are amazing. Absolutely, every single one of you guys are amazing. Anybody who's first time watching my, if you're new to the channel, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. It's just one click away. It would help me out tremendously. Thank you guys very much. Have a good rest of your day. Stay safe. And as always, until the next one.